Hi everyone, I'm going to get right into the reading. So whatever the cards want to say, please keep in mind that I channel multiple energy groups on here, so this may or may not be for you. Only take it if it resonates. If it's your reading, you'll intuitively know it. And I appreciate your support. Thank you guys for commenting, liking, sharing, subscribing. I like hearing your stories. So let's see what the cards want to say. What's the message for someone on my channel? Nine of Pentacles, Two of Swords, The Hanged Man. Seven of Pentacles, Nine of Cups. Queen of Cups, King of Cups. Wheel of Fortune. Why the Wheel of Fortune? Bear with me, guys. The Hierophant. Oh, I see what it's saying. Oh shit, okay, hold on. This was a weird reading, like it took me a minute because I primarily channel, so sometimes it takes me a little bit because like, I, I don't just go by the definition of the cards, I also go by the characters, by the energies I feel off them. You know, I might feel different energies at different times. Um, okay, someone's here. someone here has been single for too long and I feel like you've almost become bitter and closed off. It's like... The message I'm getting overall is not to sabotage your happiness because you do actually have a divine counterpart here, queen and king of cups. So, you know, cups are, it's water energy. It's about emotion. So this is like, this is a, a divine match and someone's being guided not to repeat karmic cycles and sabotage this. Because I was looking at this, I was like, this is really strange energy because nine of pentacles, nine of pentacles is about someone who's single, who's abundant, but in this particular context I actually feel like this is someone yes you might be single you might be financially abundant it's like you're focused on your goals and that's a positive thing you should keep doing that but it's almost like you've become so independent that you don't know how to let people in anymore you don't know how to open yourself up or how to fully believe in love anymore and I feel like you're trying to change that because nine of pentacles too is someone who okay so the ten of pentacles is it's like you have everything. It's like, you know, wealth, family, love, money, uh, leaving a legacy behind. It's like you have absolutely everything. So the Knight of Pentacles is someone who's almost at that point. They just need that last pentacle to have everything. And, and a lot of the times that pentacle is love. It's interesting in the Knight of Cups here too, because Ten of Cups is also about, you know, just love, union, happiness. So it's like you're almost there, but... <laughs> It's almost like now that you're almost at the finish line with this, you're you're having to fight the urge to sabotage something. It's like don't reject something that's really good just because you're not used to it. And I'm not telling you to try to force yourself to date someone who's not your type. That's not what I'm saying. But the energy I'm getting here is it's almost like you just you got so used to being independent. You got so used to being alone. And even if you are thriving in that energy, it's like now you're recognizing that there's not love in your life. Maybe you just kind of like adapted to not being close to people. And it's it's almost like, I don't how do I explain the energy that I'm feeling? Because I'm getting like visuals too of just someone that's just focused on their goals. Like they're not miserable. Like they're, you know, they're they're focused on saving money or going to school or a career or um just living their best life, you know, whatever it might be. Like, I'm not getting the energy of unhappiness necessarily, but it's it's almost like someone's having this epiphany that like, oh, wait a minute, like I, why am I so used to being alone? Like, how have I gotten so used to being alone? Like, wait a minute, I think love is what's missing in my life. 
it's like they've been trying to fill that void and they've been almost overly independent trying to feel that fill that void that you know like it's human nature to need support and need love and need other people and now I think this overly independent person and this could be you or this could be someone that you're dealing with take it as it resonates but I think this person is recognizing now that they've been blocked and they're having a new perspective about how there's just there's something missing in their life and it's like they want to build something here they want they want to find their soulmate, their twin flame, whoever, you know, they want to find their divine counterpart. But it's almost like, okay, bear with me, hold on. <laughs> it's almost like you have a chance to come together and work with this person, but someone's it's like you're not used to working with others. Or you're not used to being a team with someone. It's like someone has to learn to find more of a balance and not just be independent all of the time. There has to be more of a balance in someone's life. Because it's almost like there's there's a divine partnership here and someone's almost wanting to sabotage it or wanting to reject it because it's, it's, not, it's not what they expected or it's not... Um, what they're used to and so it's taking a lot of strength for this person not just to reject this and not to repeat a karmic cycle three of pentacles is is also about you know like you know like i said teamwork working together with someone hmm and the wheel of fortune yeah karmic cycles tell me more about this karmic cycle that's being wrapped up here Emperor, Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Swords, hmm. the Knight of Swords can bring information in, but I feel like he can also be kind of cutthroat and a little bit too hasty. I almost feel like these these sides of yourself were almost at war with each other. I almost feel like someone's primarily, and you could be a woman that's primarily in your masculine energy too, and you're being guided to balance things out and get back in touch with your feminine energy and balance those sides of yourself out. Um, because whoever this is for, it's like whether you're male or female, it seems like your masculine energy has been dominating you for a long time and it's really important to get back in touch with your your emotional side and get back in touch with your feminine energy again and, and merge the two and I feel like I feel like these two energies have been kind of it's like these are two aspects of your personality and I feel like they've almost been at war with each other so there's the knight of pentacles where it's like you desire that loyalty and that stability Maybe you've been a little bit stubborn, a little bit rigid about how you go about getting that, you know, possibly even vengeful at times, but it, it's like you, you, yeah, you desire this loyalty and this stability. You want to be grounded, but then there's this other side of you, this feisty side, this kind of cutthroat, impatient energy, and I feel like maybe it, it's like you're not balancing them out, and so you're going back and forth between the two. Like, I'm trying to think of an example of this. Let's say that you're in a partnership, for example, and you're hoping for a commitment. And, you know, let's say you're casually dating and you're hoping it goes further. So it's like you kind of tune into this Knight of Pentacles energy where it's like 80% Knight of Knight of Pentacles, 20% Knight of Swords, where, you know, you're you're trying to be loyal and stable and grounded and patient, but then maybe you're overly patient. Like you let things slide, you let them get away with too much, you just kind of it, it, it's it's like moving a little bit too slowly, not making your needs and opinions heard enough, at least in this context, this energy that I'm getting, that's what I'm feeling from this. Where it's like, you're a little bit too patient, a little bit too understanding. And then you get pissed off, you get upset because you're like, well, nothing's happening. You know, I tried to be grounded. I tried to be loyal. I tried to be stable and like nothing's coming in. And then that's when you get pissed off. And it's like, this other person might not have even known how you felt. And out of nowhere, you're like, you know, screw you. I'm done waiting. Like, I'm, I'm not waiting for a commitment anymore. 
and this could, could apply to multiple areas. It's just a general energy. You know what I mean? This could apply to work. This could apply to to friendships as well, where it's like you bottle it up, you try so hard to be patient, and then it's like you kind of just explode with this Knight of Swords energy. It's like you you just charge in with this information out of nowhere, and the person doesn't even see it coming. Like there's not a heads up because you've been trying so hard to be this Knight of Pentacles that they didn't expect you to suddenly switch it up and be this Knight of Swords. And, you know, just out of nowhere, be like, you know, why the hell are you taking so long? Like, why aren't you committing to me or why aren't you offering me this? Um, so I think, who you know, whoever I'm talking to, or whether, whether this is you or your person that I'm channeling here, it, it's like you really need to learn that balance because it makes sense to be both these people, but it doesn't work for you to to go back and forth between one or the other, one and the other, you know, back and forth. It's, it's like it doesn't... Um, it just I think it just kind of confuses people and then it leads to loss. It leads to you being rejected here with the five of cups. It leads to you being misunderstood or you maybe in friendships or relationships being seen as dramatic or over emotional because, you know, the people like they don't realize what you're going through in this Knight of Pentacles when you were bottle, bottling up your emotions and you were trying to be so patient and understanding and you weren't really, you know, standing up for yourself. You weren't really asking for what you needed. And then out of nowhere, it's like you just charge in and, and suddenly demand what you want. Or you suddenly just lay it out, lay it all out on the table. Um, and then people don't under people just don't get it though. Like they don't they don't understand the process. They don't understand how you were really feeling when you were forcing yourself to be the Knight of Pentacles. Um, let me know if that's making sense for you guys. So, you know. From another person's perspective, like from the perspectives of, you know, friends or family or, or you know, potential romantic partners that you've lost, they just feel like you were the Knight of Swords the whole time and you were just pretending to be a Knight of Pentacles. They're like, there could even be rumors going around about you, unfortunately. They could be like, this person's dramatic or this person's overly emotional or they just, you know, whatever else. So, um so yeah, the balance is important because it's like you need to kind of find a way to um, to not bottle up your emotions, but also not let it, you know, get to a point where you're just lashing out at everybody. Don't let it get to that point where it's like you're trying so hard and you're just putting your needs aside and then out of nowhere it's like you explode because you can't take it anymore. Um, try to just voice your needs in a way that's like, if you can, non-confrontational, you know, like if you're dating someone and you're, you're trying to be patient and it's like, you feel like it's just not going anywhere or you're being let on, just talk to the person, you know, don't lash out, don't freak out, don't be overdramatic, just talk to them and, and, you know, have like healthy, honest, open communication and figure out where it's going, even if you have to do it in a subtle way. Um, because if you keep going, if you keep this cycle up, it's like it's going to keep leading to loss is what I'm feeling here. This could even be someone who doesn't really know how to flirt. And so it's almost like, I don't know, I just feel like, I feel like the way you see yourself and the way that other people see you are like two different things not saying they see you as a bad person but I just feel like you're a very whoever I'm talking to it's like you're very misunderstood um yeah I feel like this could be someone it's like you flirt with like you you think that you're flirting with people but you're not really maybe you're not being forward enough like it's not obvious that you're flirting and then it's it's kind of like you get impatient and you're like well well screw it I guess this person doesn't like me I'm done and it's like the whole time the person didn't even realize that you had any interest in them. It's like news to them, you know? So I, I feel like you kind of have to, you, you need to be a little bit more self-aware here, basically. I feel like you're also very quick to assume the worst. It's almost like, it goes back to what I was saying about that independence where it's, it's almost become it's almost too much at this point it's like you're so self-sufficient you're so used to doing it all on your own that I feel like you're used to having to be the emperor even if you don't want to be the emperor you're used to having to be an emperor energy to the point where I, th I feel like you're just very quick to assume the worst about people you're just very quick to be like oh that's just another douchebag that's going to cheat on me or that's just another um, it, it's like you're not giving people a chance. Like you're not, 
it's almost like I think, and this isn't for everyone, but for some of you, I almost feel like you kind of stereotype people a little bit. Um, and it is important, you know, stereotyping isn't always, well, I don't want to say stereotyping isn't a bad thing, but it's, it's not a bad thing to like tune into your intuition and observe people and see what kind of energy you pick up. That is really important to do. But I feel like someone's intuition here is being clouded by their past experiences. So it's like you think that you're tuning into people, but you're really just assuming the worst about everybody. Like you haven't really tuned in. You know what I mean? Like you're just kind of projecting onto them. Like let's say you just came out of a scenario where you got cheated on and you, you know, you're meeting people, you're maybe on dating websites and you're like, oh, that person looks like they're going to cheat. That person looks like they're going to cheat. Like, like you're, you're just very quick to, um, to project. And so I think you have to ground yourself. You have to become more self-aware and you have to learn to use your intuition so you can make sure you're not repeating those patterns and you can tell who actually is the cheater type and who, you know, might potentially actually be someone that would be loyal to you. Listen to both the, the red flags and the green flags. You know, listen listen to your intuition as much as you can. Let me look more into this. What is this opportunity that they're being someone's being warned not to sabotage? It's almost like you finally have love, but it's it's like now that it's finally here, you you don't fully believe in it. You know, you're still holding on to the past or you're still holding on to to this emperor energy you're holding on to what's familiar to you tell me more about this yeah it's like it's here it's it's here but you're the queen of swords ten of pentacles everything you've wished for everything you've manifested is here love money abundance happiness stability but it's like you're the queen of swords you're not it's like you see how she has the you see this like happy couple too and and dogs or, or animals could be significant here i think there's children on this card as well but you see how she's like she's got her back to it she doesn't even see it she doesn't even it's like this happy couple this energy that's like right next to her but she doesn't see it because she's so focused on defending herself from things that don't even need to be that she doesn't need to defend herself from you know and and this could be so I'm getting I, I try not to go into like mental health too much um, on my channel just like liability reasons like you know full disclaimer I, I cannot I'm, I'm not licensed to diagnose anyone with mental illness you know these I'm just going to say these readings are for entertainment purposes only like this is not to be taken in place of uh, advice from a qualified professional but like for me like I deal with depression and anxiety um and like I have my phases where it's worse especially if I'm like alone and I'm really getting my head then I get more depressed like there's usually a reason for it it's not just random it's it's almost like I I feel alone and then I kind of just spiral and I think about things I've gone through in the past um and this just energy kind of remind me reminded me of dissociation because there's times like where I just it, it's like it's dissociation in the sense where it's almost like I feel like I'm dreaming, like things almost, you know, don't feel completely real to me. And it almost feels like my mind is like trying to protect me and there's nothing to protect me from. Even if I'm in a safe environment, it's like sometimes my mind will just automatically try to protect me and I end up feeling a little bit spacey because uh, I feel like someone else is dealing with that too, whether it's from PTSD, depression, anxiety or another mental illness. I think someone on here is also dealing with dissociation because this really reminded me of that energy of someone's mind just automatically protecting them because they've been through so many traumas, um, you know, whether it's physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, just just loss. Uh, I saw a meme the other day that really resonated with me where it was, um, I think it said trauma isn't just about the bad things that you've experienced. It's also about the good things that you've never experienced, you know, like those those times when you're just completely alone you have no one like you don't have you know good life experiences that's trump that's traumatic that's that's just as traumatizing as having bad experiences with someone honestly in my opinion like loneliness can be absolutely traumatizing um we're not meant to be that alone but anyway um what i was saying is it's like it i was getting that energy like of dissociation with this queen of swords where it's like she's 
she's not in the present moment. She's not aware. He or she is not aware of the energies that are around them. You're not aware of the love, the money, the abundance, the happiness that's already surrounding you. You know, this Queen of Swords is still in a dissociative state. She's still not fully in the present moment. She's still on the battlefield mentally. She hasn't, she hasn't found rest. She hasn't found peace. She's still fighting the, these inner battles. She's still prepared for war, even though the war is completely over. It's like she, he or she is living in the past. Um, yeah, it's like you have love all around you. Ace of Cups, you have a love offer, but you got to make a judgment call. Are you going to accept that love offer? Because you're going to have to leave things from the past behind, honestly, if you want to be able to recognize the love that's around you. Um, you're going to have to leave a king of swords in the past. Honestly, and when I'm, when I'm channeling now from this, because it's like the queen and king of swords, that's like, a, that's like the divorced couple of the deck. That's I mean, yeah, they're counterparts, but they're not really like... I don't usually see them as a happy couple. Like I said, I always channel differently. So like, you know, next reading I do, I could pull the Queen of Swords and be like, oh, this woman is like logical and strong and independent. But like in this in this spread, the energy I channel from it, no, she's not logical. She thinks she's, log she's being logical. She thinks that she's being strong and independent, but really she's just closed off. Sorry, I know that's harsh, but... But the world of five of cups and the king of swords, I almost feel like with what I'm with what I'm channeling here is, is that this person rubbed off on you, this king of swords, like maybe he was cold and guarded and distrusting. And it's like you took on some of his or her demons. You took on those energies. It's almost like you were trying to help this person and, and be with them and love them or save them or whatever. And you actually ended up kind of becoming just like them, like you ended up. It's like the empath that just wears themselves out to the point where they become the narcissist. You know, empaths can become narcissistic if they're not careful. If you're empathic and you're not setting boundaries, you're not, uh, you know, grounding yourself and protecting your energy. You're just giving and giving and giving to everybody and you're not really you're just letting psychic vampires drain you. Eventually you become lonely and angry and bitter about it and you become closed off yourself and you can even adopt those narcissistic tendencies yourself and so I kind of feel like that's what happened with this queen of swords she gave too much to this king of swords and um she's being guided to like fully walk away and, and heal from this and get whatever kind of closure she needs if you need to if you need to give this person a piece of your mind I would say do it too if you know that you're done don't do it for them though don't don't if this is someone from your past that you need closure with and you know you're not going to get closure with them like you're still kind of partially it's like they're still affecting you energetically somehow you haven't fully cut the cords to this person yet and you you probably need to there needs to be some kind of ending here but you know I would say maybe even message this person and just get the closure you need but again don't message them for don't message them expecting a certain outcome sorry Sorry, guys. <laughs> don't message them expecting a certain outcome. Don't, um, like, do it for yourself. You know, this person might tell you off. They might be like, screw you for saying that. Or they might just block you. But it, it's not for them. It's for you. It's so that you can, you can, you know, show yourself like, hey, I said everything to this person. I told them everything I felt. I put it all out there. I've, you know, said my piece so I can, I can close this chapter now. I can have that closure because I've, I've, you know, said what I need to say finally. Okay, let's wrap this reading up. Can you, can you, um, can you focus more on the, uh, the King and Queen of Cups energy so that, it's probably going to come out in another reading too because I think this reading wanted to talk more about you as a person, like your experiences. I think they didn't want to make it just about a relationship. They want they want you to do this for yourself. They want you to end these patterns for yourself. Um, now let me see. Is there anything that wants to be said about this in this reading? I'm going to do one more spread here. Hermit. Six of Cups. 
yeah, you might have childhood wounding as well. Hermit is like, it can, it can be someone going into, well, it can be someone like going into solitude, doing a soul searching. The hermit is the emperor that lost everything. And it's like, he has to, that's how I've heard, I've heard one reader describe it that way, which really resonates with me. It's like the hermit is the emperor that didn't appreciate and recognize what they have. So they lost everything. And now they have to go to this mountain. They have to go to the, this mountain alone. They have to isolate themselves and do soul searching to find themselves and rebuild themselves. It almost seems like that's what someone's going through here. Six of Cups can be about childhood nostalgia and there's heartbreak. So I feel like there's childhood patterns at play here too. Childhood wounding. Things that need to be looked at more. Um, yeah, in order to have victory. All right, let's wrap this reading up. Anything else? Yeah, it's like someone just, it's almost like whoever I'm talking to, I feel like you're, I know people are not going to like this reading because you guys always hate getting called out. <laughs> I swear, whenever, I know like people on my channel love, they like you guys love love readings, but when I do readings like this where I just call this collective group out, like I always get dislikes. <laughs> I always get people that are like pissed off and they're like, no, that's not me. And it's like, okay, if it's not you, then this isn't your storyline. This isn't your reading, you know? Um, but okay. So I, I almost feel like it's like you're emotionally unavailable, honestly. And I don't think you even realize you're emotionally unavailable. You don't see it that way. You see it as strength and independence. And I'm not saying you're not strong and independent. Like, I think you are strong. I think you are independent. But I think that you take that strength and you take that independence a step further where it's like you go too far with it. You know what I mean? Like you're out of balance. And so it's it's almost like you use strength and independence as, I don't want to say a crutch, but like almost like a shield where you use it to hide yourself from the world or you use it as a as an excuse not to get close to people you know like you you tell yourself you have certain things that you tell yourself like oh like I'm you know like I just really love myself I'm not going to settle like I'm uh you know that person was probably just a player anyway or that person's probably you know that person's probably just going to hurt me like I have all I need it's it's like you're 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 making excuses not to be close to anyone um, and you're viewing it as positive traits such as strength and independence, but then it's like you're actually emotionally unavailable and kind of sabotaging yourself. I feel like you may even be putting your happiness in the future, like someday I'll meet the right person or someday I'll, I'll meet the right friends or it, it, it's almost like you're like you're not aware of the the sabotaging subconscious patterns that you're enacting that you're repeating I hope this makes sense for you guys for whoever this is for so I, I would I would recommend doing shadow work doing journaling and like looking at that looking at where you might not be fully emotionally available looking at those patterns and again not not going from one extreme to the other it's like it is good to be cautious with people it is good to try to read people don't jump into something if you genuinely feel like someone's a player or a cheater or it's negative like don't jump into it but also don't project and just assume that about everyone off the bat don't assume the worst about everyone off the bat it's like you know find find that balance between taking it slow and getting to know someone and um being a little bit vulnerable and, and kind of matching their energy and going with the flow a little bit more instead of going from the extreme of like, oh, I'm going to completely open up to this toxic person or I'm going to completely shut down and just, you know, say, screw everyone. I have all I need. You know what I mean? It, it's like there's that balance. And when you sabotage yourself, too, because, you know, keep in mind that not what what is it like 90 percent of body language is subconscious. So, I mean, you can sabotage yourself like subconsciously, like you can, if you have like deep rooted subconscious, like childhood wounds, abandonment issues, uh, you know, traumas like, like that, that are still resurfacing and still, you know, replaying themselves, you can sabotage yourself without even realizing it. Like you could meet a really good person and just subconsciously, it's like, you're not attracted to them. They, they, you're, it shifts your perspective where it's like, you're not physically attracted to them because you don't resonate with just having a happy, stable relationship. 
you know, where you're not, you're not used to that, even if you want it. Um, so it's like, you can sabotage yourself by like subconsciously pushing away good people. And not only, not only subconsciously pushing away good people, but also subconsciously, um, drawing in and being drawn to bad people to negative people to you know player types or whoever else and and letting them hurt you and then it's almost like a like it confirms your 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 subconscious bias it's almost like like you push the good people away and you open up to people that you subconsciously know are going to hurt you but on a conscious level it's like you tell yourself oh I'm finally giving love a chance I'm finally letting myself be happy I'm opening up and then when they break your heart inevitably as your subconscious knew that they would, it, it's like it confirms that those deep-rooted insecurities, those deep-rooted fears, um, it's like there's some kind of pattern that you keep replaying that that needs to, to be wrapped up. There's some kind of cycle here that needs to be wrapped up. And once you really look at this, once you acknowledge this, instead of just trying to go from like point A to point, you know, F or whatever, like actually taking the steps and like, you know, balancing things out developing your intuition you can move forward here you can become the magician you can move things from rough waters to calmer waters okay let's wrap this up let's actually wrap this up for real this time three of wands the lovers four of pentacles the chariot Yeah, it's like, I feel like you have love coming in, but it's like you're not recognizing it because you're so used to the worst. What is this? Two of Cups, the Empress. Hmm. Yeah, I think someone put you in a third party situation. You need to free yourself from it. For some, it's a third party cycle that you need to stop repeating. That's what I'm feeling from these cards. But um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to put this out there.